top 10 tips to master quant trading. Number one is obsession. With anything in life, you've got to be weirdly obsessed with it to do really good. When you're obsessed with it, you will put all your energy and even more energy than you think you can expel into that skill. And being obsessed with quant trading will help you get there to help you push through tough times. And even when things are going well, it'll push you to maybe find new trading system ideas um, to build exotic new tools that help you discover alpha. Obsession will help you immensely and it will help you really push past that finish line and finding good, good trading systems, building good trading systems. I think that's really important. I know it's not really a quantitative aspect of being good at, as, as a, a quantitative trader, but that obsession is required. If you're not excited when you wake up uh, every day about either finding new trading ideas, testing them, it's, it's, I think you're gonna fail. Uh, you need to be excited about it. Sometimes that excitement takes a while to build um, and sometimes that excitement doesn't build until you make money, uh, which is also another battle. Sometimes, you know, money is obviously one of the biggest factors that this is a successful business. And sometimes you don't get that obsession or excitement until you start making money. So I understand that it can take time to build, but over the long run, you should be obsessed and excited to, to, to work on, on quantitative trading projects, whether that's, you know, researching trading ideas, testing them, uh, implementing them, ex executing them. You should be obsessed and excited about that. Uh, so number two is edge discovery. So number two is edge discovery. Obviously mastering quantitative trading, you need to be able to discover edge, whether that's maybe trend following strategies. Some, some, some examples are, are trend following strategies, mean aversion strategies, uh, statistical arbitrage, uh, high frequency order book trading. And finding those that discovery of edge is super important. Not so much the coding aspect. I think coding is obviously important. You need to be able to implement your trading systems and ideas, but how are you finding edge? Can you define your edge? Is your, your validation of your edge proper? I think that's really important. And obviously mastering algo trading, you need consistent alpha, consistent new edge every year. Your trading systems do decay every year. For me, they decay about 30% on average. So that means every year you need to have 30% more alpha discovery uh, to kind of fight that, that strategy decay. So edge discovery is super important. It doesn't have to be super complex, but you need a, a process, a discipline of finding that edge through trading systems. Uh, obviously software, a lot of software helps automate that as well, but edge discovery is super important on mastering algo trading and you need a, a solid process validation of finding your edge. So that's number two. Number three is risk adjusted. I can't spell today risk adjusted returns. The goal of quantitative trading is to be, is to stay in the game. You want to have this as an everlasting business and you have to stay in the game, right? You have to have enough capital to survive, to keep making bets in the market. And the only way to do that is having risk adjusted returns. So getting returns that are favorable to the amount of risk you're expelling or you're showcasing in the market. So obviously there's metrics like sharp ratio, return to drawdown, Calmar ratio, many mathematical metrics to measure your risk adjusted returns, but you should not be focusing on the end net profit uh, on the dollar amount for your trading systems. You should be focusing on getting good risk adjusted returns. So for every amount of risk you're putting in the market, you're getting a little bit more return than that risk. And that should allow you to stay in the game in the long run, because the longer you stay in the game, the more bets you can make. And if you have edge, then the more bets you can make, the more money you can make on a risk adjusted basis. So that's number three for algo trading, quantitative trading, algo trading, same thing. And sorry, my, my writing is terrible. I, I'm a terrible writer. Uh, number four is capital. Capital is a huge part in mastering quantitative trading. I guess it's more of the overall business of running either, either trading your own capital or running your own firm, but you do need capital to survive, whether that's a big upfront, you know, principle or consistent inflow of capital over the course of your future, right? Um, so super important. You, you need capital to to stay in the game, to you know pay for expenses, and then also capital to make your bets so you can make a, a return. And a lot of people lack capital. However, I think I think you know raising money isn't isn't super easy, of course. But there is a lot of allocators out there, a lot of money out there that can be can be you know deposited into your 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 quantitative trading firm. It's more of a uh, connection 
and, and raising capital, that type of, you know, is it, it, that, that type of a business is a separate topic, but you do, do need money to be successful and to master this. Uh, you cannot be starting a, a trading business with a little amount of money. If you don't have a lot of money, then you do need to look at either raising capital um, for that. And I'm going to be talking about that in a separate video, but capital is super important. You need a lot of it to be successful. Once again, to allow you to make more bets in the market. And if you have edge, then in the future, those bets should pay off for you. So capital, number four, you need a lot of it. Number five is, sorry, what's number five? I got this on my phone. Number five, okay. Keep strategies simple. Keep strategies simple. So what I found is that having strategies that are, sorry about that. Having strategies that are simple will help you master algo trading. Why, right? That sounds stupid. You think that complex, complex code, complex execution is what's gonna allow you to succeed. And I've found that to be the opposite. The more complex a strategy is, A, it's harder to debug and fix. Even if you write really good code, it does take longer to debug and fix if there's an issue. But also the more rules your system has, the more chance you're gonna overfit your, your trading system. All right, if your system has five, six rules to enter and then another three, four rules to exit, in total, what's that? Eight, eight rules. You know, I, I found those strategies. They just, they only work for a very short amount of time or don't work at all. Keep your strategy simple. One to two rules max uh, for the entry side. And then for the exit side, honestly, one to two rules is, uh, is a sweet spot. So keep your strategy simple. It's also easier to debug and really helps with, um, you know, future proofing your code. Number six is master a niche. So I've decided to master the niche of trading all markets, being diversified in my sector performance for my trading systems. I like the, the sectors to be as even as possible. I found A, to have the most success with that, the volatility kind of meets my needs as well. And I'd rather just place a lot of bets over multiple different markets. You need to choose what you're gonna master. Are you gonna master what I do, where I diversify and trade a lot of markets, do you want to master maybe one market, maybe be a master of, of trading gold or master of trading oil? That's an option as well. Once again, I recommend diversifying and building strategies in multiple markets. I found that works for me, but really choose a master of that niche. Maybe you want to master uh, trend following strategies. Maybe you want to master mean reversion strategies. Pick a mastery and really focus on it. And, and I think you'll get better returns for that energy you expel to it. Number seven is, this is sounds so simple, but stop losses. Uh, this is obviously very controversial and doesn't work for everybody. But if you want to master algo trading, you've got to have some type of stop uh, for your individual strategies and maybe even your portfolio as well. Some people can, some successful traders don't have this and they're able to succeed through it. Personally, for me, I'm probably biased. You know, I'm not saying I'm always right but uh, I need stop losses, right? If my strategy is not doing well, I don't wanna have a super massive loss on an individual trade if there's a halt or there's a big you know, macro, uh, macroeconomic news event. I like that, uh, that psychology, the, how should I say it? The mental note of having a stop loss if things go wrong and my bet's wrong, I know how much I can lose uh, based on an individual trade. This kind of goes back to staying in the game as long as possible stops help with that, right? And there's a whole topic of, okay, well, stops, you know, reduce your, your trading system's performance. They, you know, they, they limit you on your downside. Um, and what if a trading system, you know, an individual trade could bounce back if you're stopped in hit, yada, yada, yada. For me, you know, stops are needed for me to stay in the game and they're very important, okay? So that's number seven. A uh, very simple one, have stop losses on all your individual systems. I mean, maybe you make them wider, but having them there in case of a catastrophic event is always good. It's, it's sort of like an insurance policy. So that's number seven. Number eight here, sorry, I have them on my phone. Do, 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 we're on eight. Uh, okay, modular code. So all code you build for your quantitative trading business should be modular. You should be able to reuse it many, many times. This is super massive. It, it allows you to get compounding returns in, in terms of technical debt or less technical debt. So if you're building a lot of modular code that you can copy and paste, that means worst case scenario, if there's an issue with your code, it will fix all systems when you, once you make one change. And also for implementation, 
it will allow you to implement faster with less issues, right? If you have a working piece of modular code and you're able to copy and paste that into new code, whether maybe it's new trading systems uh, or new tools, it's gonna be a lot easier. What can I say? It's gonna be a lot easier to, to replicate and to scale your business. So build modular code that works. Uh, obviously it takes more time when you first start out, but once you get into a good rhythm and you start launching more and more trading systems live and taking out trading systems, having that modular code will help you just implement faster so you don't really have to think about uh, implementation or execution as much. And you can focus on more important stuff like edge discovery. So modular code is number eight. Number nine, you do, I'll save that for number 10. What was number nine? Number nine, I'll just call this backtest the right way, the right way. So backtesting is one small piece of quantitative trading. I think it's like over talked about, but there should be like 10 other pieces after the back test that you should be doing before you start putting capital into a trading system. So back test the right way is number nine. How I would summarize this is you should have a multi-step process from nothing to idea to trading system that's running live with live capital. You should have a multi-step process before you go live with any trading system. So uh, back testing is one small piece. There's a lot more with it and there's a lot of knickknacks and, and very specific things that you should be testing to know if your trading system's good. If you wanna learn more on how to do that, see the links in the description below. I have a course on how to teach how to backtest the right way, but that's really important. And it's, it's honestly like nine or 10 steps. Backtesting is like number three. So there's like nine other steps that you should be following to building good trading systems. Testing out of sample, uh, walk forward analysis, correlation analysis, and a lot of other steps. So build a discipline, a process, a factory for your trading systems that follow very specific steps before going live. It should be very specific, very harsh, very strict uh, before putting live capital. It's very easy to lose money with quantitative trading. Uh, there's a lot of other competition. So going through that filter of building those really strict criteria steps should allow you to over time build the trading systems. All right, and number 10, you gotta treat it like a business. Okay, so quantitative trading, treat it like a business. How much are you making per month? How much are you losing per month? Logging everything, tracking everything, dollars, tracking, errors, bugs. Are those errors, bugs costing you money, making you money? Um, your, your, your systems that you're launching at a specific period in time, how much have they made you since they've launched? How much have they lost you? Um, are you smartly adding or removing trading systems? tracking that savings and, and additions as well is really important. Take it seriously, you know, take it seriously as you do with other things in life, whether it's your maybe job, business, gym, some sports that you play, treat it seriously and you will get better results. It'll make you work harder. It'll make you, uh, it'll make you more often make good decisions. And also like a bonus, some, some parts of quantitative trading, you kind of have to make an, a decision and, and sort of live with the outcome. So one thing that I do that I've made a decision and kind of live with the outcome is deciding when to take out a trading system. Initially, you know, I tested a bunch of things and I found that, okay, maybe nine months is the best where if a trading system's lost money in the rolling nine month period, I take it out, okay? I did that, I lived with the outcome, did that for a couple months, it was costing me money, so then I changed it to 12 months. So now if a trading system has lost money in the rolling 12 month period, I take it out, so far that's saving me money. So making a, a decision and kind of living with the outcome is sort of opposite of quantitative trading because you're not able to backtest that. The problem with backtesting that type of, of idea is that your backtest, even, even out of sample tests are the best case scenario, right? You've, at some point, you fit it to your in sample and you have your out of sample, which usually more, more always pretty much makes money, right? So then you, you know, Try and do that. You try and optimize based on that, on when to take out systems and you're kind of overfitting. So those types of decisions where you're trading live and then you need to make a decision on an outcome on your live results, you kind of have to make a decision and live with the outcome. And if that outcome is not what you want, then make a change, all right? So once again, you know, my nine month rule of taking systems out when they've lost money in the last rolling nine months was costing me money. I changed it to 12 months, so far it's working and I'm living with the outcome. All right, 10 tips to master algo trading. Let me know if you like these types of videos with the whole whiteboard. Uh, I might make more of them, kind of 
change up the vibe a little bit. But I think uh, if you follow these 10 steps, it'll help you become a master of quantitative trading, algo trading, whatever you want to call it. I know I've used both words, all video. Uh, let me know in the comments below if you follow some of these rules or if there's maybe some new ones here that you never really thought about and now you kind of have a new perspective on quantitative trading. I'd uh, love to hear your thoughts. But yeah, have a good weekend, guys. We'll see you next week. Peace.